The film starts with a beautiful woman in a hospital. She has just given birth and is lying in a hospital bed while her baby is crying beside her. Later, the scene changes to the same woman taking a shower. She looks sad, but we don't know why. In the next scene, the same young woman is in her home playing with her little sister. She prepares to leave the house and her father gives her a scarf as a parting gift. She kisses her family goodbye and leaves to ride the bus. Her name is Samira and it turns out that she's a teacher and she's heading to a remote village outside of Sarajevo to teach. When she arrives, she asks the locals where the school was and they point her to the right direction. Upon entering the school building, she sees that it's empty. She then decides to leave to go to the house that she rented instead. The next day, Samira arrives at the school to find her students already waiting for her. Before the class starts, she tells her students that she will be teaching them until their teacher comes back. She asks them if they've ever been to Sarajevo, but none of them have. One of the students tells her that the old teacher is never coming back just like the others. They get bored of the small village and decide to leave after a while to be replaced by another teacher. The cycle continues this way, the students say. At lunchtime, Samira tries to contact her family using the village phone but there's no answer. That afternoon, she takes her students on a hike for a little exercise. From the top of the mountain she sees smoke coming from the neighboring village. Later that night, she writes a letter to her family. She hears a commotion on the street and sees a few villagers leaving with their children and belongings. Samira goes to sleep, but is woken up in the morning by another commotion on the street. Louder this time. She looks out the window and sees a group of men with weapons. Not long after, a man enters her small home and tells her that they are collecting the villagers. Scared but composed, she asks him if he wants coffee and he agrees. After finishing his drink, the man commands her to pack her things. She tells him that she can't leave because she's a teacher and that she's only there for a few months. The man ignores her protests and tells her that the buses are waiting outside. Samira packs her belongings and they walk out of the house. Outside, other people are being escorted by soldiers towards the town hall. Once at the town hall, the leader of the soldiers enters and tells them that they were ordered to bring them out of the town. He then tells the villagers that the men should leave first. Wives and children protest and the men who refuse to leave are forced out of the room. Once the men are out of the room and out of sight from the women and children, gunshots are heard, signaling that the men are being unalived by the soldiers outside. Later, the children and women are in a bus and they are transported to a makeshift brothel as prisoners. The next day, they are given small portions of bread and water to drink and wash themselves with. That same day, while washing her hands, Samira sees the soldiers escort four women into a nearby house. One of the women tells Samira that she heard from the cook that the soldiers are running out of supply and that they might be having trouble keeping prisoners in a few days. While they are talking, the door opens. The soldier looks around and finds Samira. He calls her and she is escorted to the same house the four women were escorted to earlier. She walks inside the house and is locked inside a small room. Not long after, three men enter the room. They order her to undress and Samira is repeatedly violated by them. In her distress, Samira sees herself standing in the corner of the room watching herself. Her imagined self walks toward her and helps her stand up. Later, Samira finds herself in a room full of women who are most likely suffering the same fate as her. She sees older women and teenage girls. Once in a while, some of the women are taken by the soldiers and are assaulted by them. Some nights Samira hears the screams, but she stays where she is knowing that there's nothing she can do to help. One day, the soldiers take two teenage girls. Later on, one of the girls comes back and Samira helps her wash her hands in the bathroom. The girl asks Samira about her cousin who was taken with her and didn't come back. Samira says that maybe she managed to escape, but the girl protests, saying that her cousin would never leave her. Samira assures the girl that her cousin will come back soon. Samira helps the girl settle down on her bed, and they fall asleep. The next day, Samira is escorted by one of the soldiers and is taken to the same small room. Samira prepares herself for the worst, but instead, the soldier embraces her and falls asleep next to her, back at the room where the women are kept. Samira is reading a book to the little girl when a soldier comes in. The little girl recognizes him as a friend of her brother's. The little girl is taken by the soldier and doesn't come back that night. Samira worries. The next morning, the little girl is brought back by the soldiers but she is unconscious. The woman immediately rushed to her. They look at her back, and she has a big scar there in the shape of a cross, as if it was carved with a knife. Later that night, the little girl is lying in the bed, and Samira tells her a story while the rest of the women listen. The next day, Samira wakes up to check on the little girl but when she reached out to check her temperature, she was already cold. The cook walks in and sees what has happened and tells the soldiers. Not long after, two soldiers enter the room and carry the dead girl out and Samira hurries to cover her with a scarf. Distressed, Samira looks through her things and sees her makeup. She proceeds to fix herself, telling the other women that they are not animals, even if they are treated so. A few days later, Samira is escorted to the captain's office. The captain asks her where she's from and what she does. He guessed that she's a teacher, and Samira replies that she was. The captain asks her how she ended up as a prisoner, and Samira says that it was a mistake. The captain agrees and invites Samira to dinner at his house. That night, Samira fixes herself and puts on a red dress. She is escorted to the captain's house, and he offers her a drink. They eat dinner, and the captain tells her that when he was younger, 
he hated school. Samira tries to be pleasant and thanks him for dinner. Samira excused herself and goes to the bathroom. When she comes back out, they are sitting on the couch and the captain tells her that there's no need for her to be afraid of him. He kisses her and they spend the night together. The morning after, Samira wakes up in the captain's bed and he tells her that she can leave, walking out of the house alone with no soldiers escorting her. Samira looks around and tries to escape, only to find a soldier stationed at the back of the house, back at the room with the women. Samira immediately goes to the bathroom and takes a shower. The next night, the captain has Samira escorted to his house again and they spend the night together the second time. The next day, while the captain is asleep, Samira steals a few bottles of medicine and bread to take to the other women. Some of the women think that she sold herself cheap and doesn't take the food from Samira. One of the women who was badly beaten asks Samira what the captain looks like and if he hurts her like the others. Samira replies that he doesn't. Samira keeps her relationship with the captain continuously thinking about ways to escape and help the other prisoners. A few days later, the women are woken up to the sound of gunshots. Samira is once again at the captain's house but before they could talk, the soldiers call the captain and he leaves, leaving Samira alone in the house. With the captain gone, Samira hurries to find the telephone but it was disconnected. The captain comes back and tells Samira to leave. It appears that there is an exchange happening where opposing sides of a war exchange prisoners of war. The women wait for a few days as the soldiers prepare for the exchange. One day, the cook takes Samira to one of the rooms to see a woman who has died from overdose. It turned out that she had just lost her child and couldn't take the pain. Finally, the soldiers order the prisoners to pack their things. They walk out of the makeshift brothel and are escorted to the bus. But before Samira could reach the bus, a soldier stops her and takes her to the captain's office. The captain tells Samira that she's lucky the war is over for her when she is exchanged to the other side. Samira asks him if the exchange means she can go home but he says that going home is not an option for either of them. Once she and the others are out of the gate, they are no longer his problem, and they will be taken wherever the other side wants to take them. The captain then gives her money, saying that she might need it. He orders her to leave, and Samira runs out the door towards the bus. The captain calls her back and hands her her backpack. The bus ride was a long one. They pass mountains and towns destroyed by the war. The bus stops at a riverside, and the soldiers order the prisoners to leave and walk toward the bridge since a second set of buses are on the other side of the river. They hike the rest of the way with the soldiers trailing them. On top of the hill, Samira and the rest of the prisoners look out to find buses driving towards them. Overjoyed, they all run down the hill towards the buses. A few weeks later, Samira is at the doctor's office. She's pregnant and wants to have an abortion, but the doctor says that it's too late. The doctor asks if she has any family members left to take care of the baby, but the nurse says that she doesn't. She's the only one in her family who survived the war. Upset, Samira runs out of the doctor's office and out of the hospital. It's raining hard, but she is still running. She finds herself at the beach and later gets groceries for herself. A few months later, her stomach has grown. At home, she is watching the television and at night she walks out into the city to watch people at the skating rink. One night, Samira is preparing tea for herself and finds that she's about to give birth. She gives birth, and we are taken back to the first scene of the movie. Samira is lying in a hospital bed with her baby beside her. Later on, she decides to walk into the infirmary and cuts her baby's identification bracelet, attempting to abandon it. Samira cannot accept the fact that she has just given birth to a stranger's child, most likely the captain's. Unsuccessful with her attempt to abandon her baby, she wakes up in her room with her baby beside her. She pulls out pictures of her own family. Seeing how happy she was in the pictures, she finally finds the humanity to take care of her baby. Samira has never allowed herself to cry all those months she was imprisoned by the soldiers and even after she was released. With her baby in her arms, she finally allows herself to cry. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.